Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over what you can do if Windows fails to boot and drops you into the UFI shell. So when you boot and you see this screen, this may look intimidating at first, but if you've used or seen the command line in Windows, then you're not too far off. So what is the UFI shell? It's a command line interface used to interact with the UFI firmware on your computer. When you turn on your computer and when it goes to boot Windows, it's going to look for the Windows Boot Manager information which is stored in an EFI partition on your hard drive. Why did you get the shell? If you're not entering the shell by choice, chances are something happened when looking or running the Windows Boot Manager. First, going to rule out the basics. If you get this screen, reboot your computer and go into the BIOS. For me, I have to hit delete to get into it. Check your boot order to see if somehow the UFI shell was selected to be first. In my case here, it's boot option number six, so it has been ruled out. Second, check to make sure that your computer detected your hard drive. If it's not seen like you see here, you may have an issue with your drive, so take it out and try it on a different computer to confirm. If you can confirm the first two and you're still getting the UFI shell, then we'll need to investigate further. So the first thing you'll see here is that it says press escape in one seconds to skip startup.nsh or any other key to continue. So the startup.nsh file is a script file that has commands that are executed by the shell when your computer boots. It says here to press escape if you want to skip it, and you would want to skip it, for example, if your startup.nsh has errors. Next, you see above here is the mapping table. So this is what the UFI sees. FS and the number beside it is the file system, and it starts off as zero. It'll mount the partitions that you have on your hard drive. For example, your NTFS C drive will go and mount it. BLK at the bottom are block devices, essentially the physical device itself, like a hard drive. There's a few basic commands you'll need to know. First, you can type help, and it'll show a list of commands that you can run. You can hit page up to scroll up, and page down to go back down. The next command is map space dash r, and this will show the mapping table and dash r will refresh. So you'll see the mapping table here like earlier. If you plug in a device like a USB drive and type in map dash r, it'll come up. I'm going to plug in a USB drive and type in map dash r. And we see here at the bottom, there's a new block device, BLK5. And you see here it's USB. And you also see that there's two extra file systems that have been mapped, FS3 and FS4. Now I'm going to unplug it and run it again, and we see that it's been removed. So going back, we need to investigate why it's going into the UFI shell. Here's a working Windows, and when you run bcd edit space forward slash enum from the command prompt as administrator, it will show you the boot configuration information and what it will look for. See here, it's going to look for boot mgfw, so going to look for that. This will be in the EFI partition. By default, it's 100 megabytes. So we see here that there is a file system FS0, FS1, and FS2. So it's going to be in one of them. First, checking FS0, colon, to switch to it. And then you can type in DIR to list the contents. And right away, we see here that there's an EFI directory. So this looks to be the one. You can also run VOL volume. And it's going to show the total disk space on this file system. So we see here it's 100 megabytes to get confirmation. We can also go into FS1, DIR. And we see here that this is the C drive, NTFS partition. And if I go to FS2, DIR, and there's nothing here. If I type in VOL, and after running VOL, it looks like that this is the system recovery partition. Going back to FS0, and I'm going to look for the file. Boot, DIR. And so we see at the bottom, boot mgfw.efi and boot mgr.efi and the bcd file as well. 
And so the different colors just helps identify what you're looking at. So blue is a directory, green is executable, and white is other. If you worked with Linux, for example, you've likely seen or configured something similar, for example, in Bash. So it's going to boot boot mgfw.efi. Now I'm going to try running it. And I'm getting command error status unsupported. If your computer was able to boot into Windows before and now it's no longer able to, you can check the date timestamp on the file to see if it's been changed recently. In this case, it has changed recently. Generally speaking, this doesn't get modified unless something has happened. Now, if this file has changed, it's possible that other files may have changed as well. As other files could have been changed, I'm going to fix it by recreating the entire EFI partition. So you'll need your Windows installation media. For me, it's going to be the Windows 11 installation media. And then I'm going to boot into it. You can reboot your computer to get into it. Or, as we're in the UFI shell, you can load it from the shell here. I'm going to demonstrate how to do it from the shell. I'm going to plug in my USB drive that has the Windows 11 installation media. I'm going to type in map-r. And we see it plugged in. And I'm going to go into the EFI partition for my Windows 11 installation media. So that's FS3. I'm going to confirm and check FS4. Vol, and we see here the volume is UFI, NTFS. So I'm going to go into the EFI directory, CD boot, then run boot x64. Setup screen, hit next. Repair your computer. Troubleshoot. Now there's startup repair. It'll fix problems that keep Windows from loading. But I'm going to show you that if you click on it, it won't work. All right, we see here startup repair couldn't repair your PC. Go to advanced options. I'm going to go to troubleshoot. I'm going to go to command prompt. Now I'm going to run disk part, list disk, so I can list all my disks. And it's going to be disk 0. Disk 1 is my USB drive. Select disk 0. And then list part to list the partitions. And, and so we're going to make partition 1, the system partition, the 100 megabyte EFI partition available. So select partition one, and I'm going to assign a drive letter to it. Use the Z drive. I'm going to hit exit, go to the Z drive, DIR, go back to the C drive. Now I'm going to format the Z drive, so it's going to remove everything. Proceed, yes. Volume label, leave as default. Go back to the Z drive, DIR, and there's nothing there. Go back to the C drive. And next, need to find out where the Windows directory is. In my case, it's under the C drive, and we see here the Windows directory. If it's not for you, then you can try other drives like the D drive, E drive, F drive, etc. Now I'm going to recreate the EFI partition using BCD boot. the location of your Windows directory, slash s, and then it's going to be on my Z drive, and then slash f, the type, so it's going to be UEFI, and then hit enter. It says here, boot file successfully created. So go to my Z drive, hit dir, and we see the EFI directory there. All right, so I'm going to unplug my USB drive and restart my computer. All 
All right, it's booted up. So that's it. That's what you can do if it doesn't boot Windows and you get the UFI shell. I hope this was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.